Well, today we're going to finish up our series on prayer, and the title of today's message is A Church Committed to Prayer. And what is a church? It's not a building, it's the people, isn't it? And it comes from the book of Luke, chapter 18. You know, once a, a minister of music uh, changed the order of service, and he wanted to make certain there would be no confusion, so he whispered to the pastor, he said, after the prayer, uh, there's going to be no response. That was a strange thing to say. He didn't mean it that there's no response to the prayer, but it came out that way, didn't it? And too often we take those kind of words literally, and we pray without expecting a response from God. So there's no reason to pray at all if we feel that way, is there? See, Jesus wants his church to grow, but if the church is to grow, it has to prepare to grow, just like you prepare for anything else. You prepare a meal, you prepare yourself for the day by dressing in the morning and cleaning up, right? And the same with, the, with God's church. The preparation for the church must begin with a commitment to pray. That's how we communicate with God, isn't it? So what is that commitment? It's a commitment to pray expecting a response from God. Expecting a response. And persistent prayer is the foundation of all Christian growth. Scriptures teach us that persistent prayer has always been the most important thing to God's people. This is true throughout the Old Testament, but also especially in the New Testament. And immediately after Jesus ascended into heaven, the disciples and the woman found themselves the Bible says constantly in prayer. Constantly in prayer. Let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 14. It says they all met together, church, right? And were constantly, what? United in prayer. Along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. And in Acts, we're also told that the early church was, church was devoted to prayer. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says, all the believers, not just some, all the believers did what? Devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the sharing in meals and to what? To prayer. They devoted themselves to prayer. And it continues throughout the book of Acts with example after example of how the church was always before God in prayer. So what happened as a result of their prayers? Well, the church became empowered with the boldness of the Holy Spirit, and the church began to grow in numbers, didn't it? More people came to the Lord because of the prayer. Prayer is indisputably one of the greatest and most underutilized right, weapons that we have at our disposal. God gave us that power of prayer as a weapon against the enemy, but we don't use it the way we should. Now, of course, Jesus knew this would happen, and that's why he told his disciples about a certain widow who persisted in prayer. And it's found in Luke chapter 18, our verse for today. And verse 1 says, One day Jesus told his disciples a, sh a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. He said there was a judge in a certain city, and he said he neither feared God nor cared about people. In verse 3, it says, a widow of that city came to the judge repeatedly saying, Listen, judge, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. But the judge ignored her for a while. But finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people. But this woman is driving me crazy because she kept on coming day after day after day. He said, because she's wearing me out with her constant request, notice it said constant, then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. In verse 7 it says, even the judge, he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't, don't you think God will surely give justice to his people who cry out? So he's saying, even that unjust judge gave that lady justice in the end. Because she what? Persisted in prayer. So if an unjust judge does it, just imagine how a just judge, our judge, Jesus Christ, will give us if we go to him in prayer. He says, I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly, but when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? See, prayer is answered when you have what? When you have faith. 
So from this parable, we're going to learn some things. We're going to learn three essential elements of what it is to have persistent prayer. Number one, persistent prayer is always persistent. In other words, you've got to keep doing it. Keep doing it. First three states, the widow came to him, what? Repeatedly. So the story has two primary characters, a widow and the judge. The judge is heartless, and he didn't fear God or man. And the poor widow came to this judge seeking justice. She had no clout in the, in the society. She, was, she didn't have a powerful lawyer. She didn't have any money to grease the wheels of justice. And she seemed completely helpless against this unjust judge and against this guy who was trying to whatever do to her, her adversary. So she couldn't count on a fail ruling from the unjust judge. The only weapon she had was persistence. Persistence. So we can be sure that this widow would have never received justice if she didn't keep going to that judge day after day when finally he just wanted to get rid of her, so he gave her what she wanted. <laughs> so God wants us to persist in prayer. And Luke tells us this in verse 1. He says, one day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and what? Never give up. C.H. Spurgeon, a great religious man of his time, said, Prayer pulls the rope down below, the great bell rings above in the ears of God. So when, you, when you're praying, you're pulling that rope, and then in heaven that bell is ringing in the ears of God. The problem is, some scarcely pull that rope, don't they? They, they pull it and the bell doesn't ring in heaven, does it? Because they're not persistent. But he who communicates in heaven is the man who grasps that rope boldly and keeps on pulling, pulling and pulling, so that bell keeps ringing until his prayer is answered. Do you want to see a church grow? Do you want to see a revival in this, in this country? Do you want to see the Spirit of God light us on fire? People coming in repentance and being baptized into Christ's name? Then we need to pray. That's what produces all of this stuff, this result. Grab the rope. Don't just pull it once in a while. On Sundays, like the church bell, right? Rings on Sundays. It used to ring so you knew it was time to come to church. Ring it all the time. Believe that God is listening. Believe that God is willing to act. Believe that great things are going to happen when you pull that bell, when you start praying. Look what Jesus said. Luke 11, verse 9. I tell you, he said, keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open. Verse 10. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. If you don't ask, you're not going to get it, right? When you were a kid, you wanted an ice cream cone from your mom or something. Right? If you didn't ask for it, you're not just going to give it to you. The ice cream truck goes down the street ringing the bell. If you don't run and ask, say, Mom, can I get an ice cream? The truck going to keep on going, isn't it? That's what's going to happen in our prayer. If we don't ask, that truck's going to keep on going and not deliver what we ask for. So we can either believe that promise about everyone who receives it. Everyone who asks will receive, or if we don't, we cannot believe it too, right? And if we don't, we as a church, God's people will stagnate and die. We won't be any worth to Him because we won't be bringing others to know Him. But if we do, we'll prosper in the strength of the Holy Spirit until Jesus returns again. The second element of persistent prayer is is persistent prayer is insistent. Insistent. You don't only have to ask all the time, but you have to insist on what you want. Like in Luke 18, verse 3. It says, The widow of that city came to him repeatedly, saying, Give me justice. She insisted. Listen, this is what I want. Give it to me. That was different than the orderly courtrooms we have nowadays where nobody's allowed to say anything too loud or they get thrown out. They, they're found in contempt of court. The courts in those days were unruly and noisy with a mass of people pushing and shoving. Everybody tried to outshed others to, to get, get the judge's attention. But the widow was so persistent and insisted so much what she wanted, the judge granted her plea. 
over all those other people who were yelling and screaming for what they want. An important point here is that we must keep our prayers going up to God with the same tenacity as this widow. God doesn't like you to keep on asking for something, right, and, and, and not believe you're going to get it. He rejoices in our being insistent because he knows that we truly know that we're going to get this if we keep asking for it. And he knows that we believe that he can do it. He hears our prayers. Some people think, well, you know what? God, God hears your prayers. He hears it the first time, so you don't need to keep asking. He's going to get mad if you keep bothering him like that. No. The Bible doesn't say that, but people actually think that. I've had people tell me, no, it's not good to keep praying for the same thing. What does the Bible say? The, the widow was insistent and persistent. That's what God, that's why he told the parable of Jesus, so that the people would do the same thing as the widow. It's impossible to be insistent in our prayer lives if we don't pray for something specific. Ask for what it is that you need. This widow had a particular situation. She said, grant me justice against my enemy. We have to assume there was a particular enemy in her life at that time and some kind of situation she was dealing with. So whatever we pray for, we need to be specific. Tell God what it is. She'd look at your neighbor and say, be specific. Be specific. Don't just ask for anything. Oh, just grant me uh, anything and everything. No. I want this. Insistent. God's not going to get mad. <laughs> After all, we are going to Him for it, right? That means we, we believe He can give it to us. Don't, don't pray, forgive my sins. Name those sins individually as you bring them before God. You can just say, forgive my sins. That, what does that mean to God? Tell him, forgive me that I said something wrong to my friend John today. Be specific. Don't pray, heal the sick. Mention their name and what the need is. Heal Mary because she's, she has a, a, a bad heart or whatever. Don't just say, heal the sick. Don't pray, be with all the missionaries. Name the missionaries. When you're praying for growth of a church, pray for specific events. Pray for your preacher. Pray for your elders. Pray for the Bible study teacher. And use their name. When we pray specifically, guess what? God answers specifically, doesn't He? A real helping, making sure our prayers are insistent and specific and seeing how God answers, some people keep a prayer diary. They jot down the things they ask for God, and then when He delivers it, when He decides to give it to you, they write down, prayer was answered on June 14th or whatever. Mm -hmm. But keep on asking until there's something next to that request. And if there is no answer after a long period of time, maybe He doesn't want you to have it right now. But that doesn't mean you don't stop asking. Get a small notebook. Write, write down your prayer request. Note the date you started praying and the date you received the answer. But most importantly, keep on praying that prayer until you have an answer either way from God. God answers prayer, but we, we need to make it specific requests if we want to get a specific answer. The third element of persistent prayer is make it consistent. Make it consistent. Again, Luke 18 and 5 says, This woman, the judge said, is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her what? Constant request. She was consistent. Day after day after day. She kept returning repeatedly and consistently. And, and the judge's un unwillingness to hear her made her even more consistent, didn't she? She just kept going and going like that ever ready battle, right? <laughs> and finally the judge did what? He relented. Why? Because she was in, she became a nuisance to him, really. Her consistent badgering wore him down to a point where he consented to grant her legal protection from the person that was oppressing her. So we need to be consistent and persistent in our prayers. And, but we also need to understand that this is a parable of contrast and not comparison. 
Jesus tells us that our Heavenly Father is not like that unjust judge. His point is that it's, it's, if this godless, corrupt judge would respond to the widow because of her constant persistence, how much more would a loving God respond to our requests? Luke 18 and 8, he says, I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly, but when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? He said, we get justice quickly. Now that doesn't mean that God will jump every time we ask him for something. He may want to see if we will continually be faithful in our prayers and in obedience to him. Are we being obedient as his sons and daughters? Do we really believe that he can give us what we ask for? God knows our needs really before we ask. He created us. And, and like a wise father, he answers according to what is best for us, what he knows best. You know the old program, Father Knows Best? Well, our Father, amen, in heaven knows best. Don't let our prayer lives be like calling a company and deal with seeking an answer to an important question about your service. I'm sure you call the cable company or the phone company. And then you get on there and, and a recording says, we know your call is important to us. Well, if it was important, you'd think somebody live would answer the phone instead of a machine, right? We know your call is important. Please stay on the line for the next available agent. And then you wait for what seems like an eternity. Nobody comes online. So you start pushing buttons on your phone, see if you can reach somebody else by accident, right? And then you do get somebody, say, oh, well, good, finally. Uh, uh, my request is, oh, you have to talk to the customer service department. Hold on, I'll transfer it. And you go right back again. How often do we cry out to God for help? But just like waiting online for the, we start, we, we're impatient. And we start pushing other buttons. We start looking up other sources or other channels where we can find an answer to our needs. Because we don't believe God is giving us the right thing. And we change channels for no purpose because now we're right back where we started. We should have stayed there and waited for God to answer. When we cry out to God for His intervention, He wants us to be consistent, to stay on track, to keep on praying for His blessings in our lives and in our church. See, so God's church is intended to grow, so we, we must never shortchange the ministry of prayer. What does prayer do? It keeps our spiritually growth, doesn't it? It helps us spiritually grow, and it helps us as a church, as God's people, grow also in numbers, and the number of people that are believers. We must be the people who are involved in a multitude of prayer. Maybe have a prayer group or a special day of fasting and prayer. But I think the question God is asking today is, will we be committed to being persistent in our prayer? Will we be seeking Him out? Will we be seeking His will for our church? And maybe seeking His will for our lives? We don't just want church growth because it's some numbers. We want some spiritual church growth. Not just people come and they hear the sermon but never make a change in their life. No. God's way includes a foundation of persistent prayer, prayer that keeps on coming until the Lord gives His answer. And that's where we finish our series this week on prayer. We found throughout the series that there's no sense praying with the wrong motives because you're not going to get an answer. There's no sense praying if you don't believe you can, can get an answer. So we have to get rid of all those roadblocks of prayer and be consistent. Be specific. Tell God what you want. When you confess your sins, tell Him what the sin is. He already knows what it is. We're not hiding anything from God. But we have to be consistent in our prayers, not only as individuals, but as a, a church. Let's pray now. Father, we thank You for this opportunity to come before You in prayer. We thank You that You're a loving God. Oh, we thank you that you are God Almighty, that you're creator of heaven and earth, that you are our creator. And we thank you that you've left us this avenue of communication, the prayer line. Works better than any telephone line. It's never out of service. We never get a busy signal. We never get a thing that says this number is disconnected. 
We thank you that we're constantly connected to you, Lord, through your word and through prayer. Help us to utilize this beautiful thing you've left us, this beautiful avenue of communication, more than we are right now. Knowing that when we make that call, you're there to answer it personally, not a recording, not a representative, but you, Lord. And you're ready to give us whatever we ask for if we're specific in our prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for that ability. We pray that we as your people, as the church, Father of Jesus Christ, would let others know about this great advantage that we have in our lives, not only for life here, here and now, but for everlasting life with you, Lord, that they too can enjoy all these things Help us to pray for increase in numbers that we can let others know about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.